I don't want to do that, but I, I think it would, especially if you're starting out, I, I just, you, I, I think you have to be phenomenal in order to be ignoring 3D. You need to be phenomenal. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, you said that we it's good to keep talking to the software tools that are coming up. Uh, yeah. What is your personal uh, theory of where those software So if you can go as far as you That's a great question. I would hope that they, I don't know. I mean, you look and see that there's one trend 3D being employed into Photoshop. All these programs are trying to sort of have a number of different functions under the same umbrella. I'm almost a little bit more down on the specialized programs, but then it gets annoying when you feel like you have a, uh, a rendering package, an organic model package, and Photoshop. And you know what? Photoshop doesn't do everything I need to do. I need to balance between Photoshop and Painter. Um, it gets a little ridiculous, and you often wish that my God, it would be great if Adobe and Corel could get together and they could have Corel's great color picker and, you know, and remember when Photoshop didn't have the ability to rotate canvas and concept art was such a, a small market to Adobe compared to all the photographic people and um, we're of little or no consequence and you get that when you see how tough it is to organize your brush sets. So, you know, maybe the, I think the software is going to get increasingly easier. Hardware is coming up, and so things are going to get faster. Uh, we now have like bug speed and, and hyper shot or key shot. And, you know, uh, rendering that just wasn't capable to the average person is just now at your fingertips, uh, given the hardware and, and the specific application. So people are able to render much real stuff faster. Uh, so I think you know, there's just going to be an acceleration, and I would like to see a design environment where. I'm able to sketch and model and sculpt everything sort of in the same package. Maybe you want to go way out. I mean, I would love to be in a room and virtually able to move around my object and be able to scale it and send it back down and, and, uh, and then click into a two-dimensional mode, lock it, and then unfreeze it. And that would be phenomenal. I mean, you saw Iron Man doing something like that. So that, that's what I would like, and I would like there to be more motion, I feel very stagnant, and I know that uh, my biological ancestry, that's not what they were doing, they were foraging for food, and now I sit around and drink rock stars, so. Uh, <laughs> uh, any other questions? Yes, Council do you feel like you have a lot of sleep? I've been sleeping pretty well lately, but, um, but yeah, it, it's, it can be really hard to turn off, um, especially if you're worried or really excited about something. I often go to sleep and my mind is, I, I'm visualizing vehicles and shapes and, and all these things. I'm seeing story scenarios and constantly flooding. Um, so looking at techniques and, and how to tune out and maybe balancing your eye and like a little exercise. You know, I find a little mountain biking, you know, before I go to bed. And I sleep better. I think this stuff is important. And, and um, I remember a, a, a top car guy at Transfer you know, at, at Art Center you know, saying, as ridiculous as it sounds, trying to take one day off a week just for you, just to replenish that well. And I remember you know, barely giving into that need, but then just spending days stressing out and not being um, very productive. So I think it's, it's you know, right now, especially if you're looking to push the limit push the envelope, look at techniques and how to, uh, how to cope with increased stress. And, and, and honestly, I mean, you're working out. If you don't give your muscles any recovery time, uh, you won't get bigger. You know, recovery time is, is integral you know, to muscle growth. So look at it that way and give yourself that and you're going to be stronger for it and a better foundation. Okay, well, uh, as it inspires you to be my personal side projects, maybe not too busy doing that a lot. Well, I wish I were doing more, but I 
let's say, a, a good story or a design aesthetic that I feel you know, needs to be explored. And you give that support for us as long as we have all uh, well, uh, things on the side. Yeah. Made from observational studies, but also I think it's it's great to be that, I mean, if you're working on the Smurfs, it might be nice to go home and, and work on the hardcore sci-fi project if you actually want to be working on it. Um, so, and, and, and it's going to only, you know, that's going to go into your portfolio, and, you know, you're going to have something that you're actually proud of and that you own and, and tell people what you want to do. It's like what I said earlier in the trans class, I announced to the teacher, like, this is a transportation class, but I want to do entertainment. And he was like, okay, cool. And I got to do it. So. What inspired you to do uh, the April Prime? Uh, that was, uh, uh, honestly, going to air shows, being part of a rocket club, always inventing. Um, it was the, the, the feeling of light, motion. Um, so I think that and, and imagining through these, these you know, imagining and drawing my own fantastic creation, because I couldn't, there wasn't a spaceship I could just hop into. No one would let me fly a fighter plane. Um, I got into drawing and art because of that. And, and also the, the movies, the Star Wars. Luke taking out the Death Star. And so like kind of hard for you to take something that was like biological and that's like you have the, the, the creature of this. Is it hard for you to take something like that and turn it into a mechanical? Or is it since you've been doing so long it's natural, you know? um, the creature? The creature. So oh, that seems like a temple. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, vehicle design is often inspired by nature. I mean, even the, what we call, I mean, you've got an F-15 Eagle, you know, that all these things are human iterations of, 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 of typically animals, jaguar, you know, car, you know. Um, they're, they're still trying to emote, you know, convey you know, the, the feeling, of the musculature, the, 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 the stance, the, 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 um, these things. So the, nature is, is your best source of, of inspiration, absolutely hands down. Uh, I guess maybe during the time you were seeing your moment where you were like, maybe this Every day, I don't even know what you're saying. Yeah, you know, <laughs> shouldn't do that. But then, you know, where I had doubts of whether yeah. I was on the right track? Yeah, a lot. How, how did you negotiate that? Right. Um, well, I mean, I guess that's part of a, a pretty focused program. But the concept there is intimidating because of the range that you can be asked to do. Um, and I wasn't sure that I was necessarily up to it. I don't know. It's a good question. Um, I think it would be sort of reassessing what it is often why I wanted to do this. I mean, you know, there's a series of circles what you're good at, and, and what you want to do, maybe it's not enjoy doing, maybe that's part of your but you know, where they intersect, that's where you got to be. And whenever I did that, that chart or line map, it would always involve drafting, architecture, vehicles, these types of things, and, and, and movies, games, they would not coalesce. So for me it was, and also I had worked in animation, and motion capture. I've worked in the video game industry for years at the Electronic Arts. And so I knew what the industry was like. I knew it was fun. It was cool hanging out with LA Laker girls and stuff like this. You know, they were, you know, they're entertainment is fun, you know. We had a ranch, we got to meet astronauts. What's it like being on the Mir space station? You would learn things like, oh my god, the, the, the Russians are tying things together with wires and you gotta watch out, you know, scratch your suit on it, you know. And, and then the fact that it's in a uh, low Earth orbit, and that there's actually no atmosphere, that the outside of the near space station is rusted. So you don't think about it. But, so, but, yeah, it's kind of fun. You need a whole range of different people. Everyone watches it. Definitely.
Definitely. I mean, uh, the Great Magazine, uh, uh, New Scientist, uh, a British publication. It's a little better than the Scientific American now, I think. Uh, but you just, there's a plethora of, I mean, you're learning more about the Big Bang or the fact that, uh, you know, Einstein's theory of relativity might go out the door soon, that, that the laws are not consistent throughout the universe. There's really fascinating things going on, and they can inform you. And understanding the quasar is interesting. It's sort of like a lighthouse in space. So all of a sudden, now we've got a space-faring race that use these quasars to navigate. You know, just interesting stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah, and even employing it as abstracts, you know, a, a, a microscopic photography or whatever. There's just so much going on, and you need to be on top of it and sort of just grabbing and going. I know where I can blow that. I can mirror this shape and I can turn this into an airplane. And meanwhile, it was it was a neat or microscopic organism, whatever. Um, you know, or where I can put it in the story. Um, pretty neat stuff. So. Yeah. I don't know if you know the uh, answer, but is it common for an artist to kind of jump from art into engineering because after art is like I'm going to go through everything. And so do you think I should go towards like vehicle design and things like that? I think you need to go to Humboldt County. No, um, I, no, I, I make a joke. I said, no, that, that, I, I think absolutely. Um, but. Again, you know, if I look at someone like Sid Mead, who has, that's what actually excites me about Sid Mead and Ralph McCoy. These are people who have, but the, the, the program at, sorry, I didn't my thought there. These are people who have worked in a multitude of fields, real world, industrial design, and architecture, to uh, entertainment design. Two are different. Sometimes there's some crossover. Someone like Sid Mead has worked between the two, and the reason is partly because of his education and who he is. The, the you know the automotive program at, at Art Center it's a bachelor of science you know you, you take math classes with people from the jet propulsion laboratories you know there is real work you know it, it's not all fun and games and gestural drawings and you know value sandwiches and punching highlights and dabs of gouache um, you know you're here it's real world problem solving and, and you are expected once in the industry to be able to work with or work with a liaison that a package engineer and someone that is the bridge between you and the engineering department. So if that's what you want to do, I would, I would highly recommend you get involved with the industrial design <coughs> now. But yeah, when it comes to DARPA and futuristic weapon systems, I mean, yeah, I hear there's some really neat stuff going on. I was just in Boston and just you know, being around some of the people, I robot in Boston Dynamics, stuff like this. I mean, People coming out of MIT, some really neat stuff. Hopefully, it saves more lives. This is something I think you can embrace. Let's have one more question and then we'll go. Actually, you have to be right yeah. the first one. Okay. I'm sorry, am I not like over on this room enough? Or? Yeah. Uh, I push you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll answer it. I'll talk. Okay. But yeah. no. well, what it sounded like from a bunch of other speakers, as well as you said, from that art center has a lot of industry professionals coming in and you can talk to them and get opinions and things like that. Yeah. But uh, at a school where we don't get so many people coming on that, what would you recommend for trying to seek out those kind of like, advice and professionals? So trying to get some kind of. I'm sorry, you, you want to, you want more industrial design knowledge? Well, not just, just like a, or for entertainment, so just for trying to find extra advice. And But you want to end up in the entertainment industry. You don't want to end up. Yeah. Well, right. an engine. What? Right. An engine? Okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, what would be the like other things to find other things to find different opportunities to get the engineer? Trying to find out where we go to look up people like. This is my double fish translator. Yeah. Thank you, John. <laughs> No, but I think a good place to uh, go is uh, online. You know, if you have a blog or something like that, and you know, you're on forums or that kind of thing, you can only talk to like Spark or whoever, you know, I see people, you know, at this caliber just shoot the pool with, you know, whoever's got a big time question about, you know, what we do. So just really kind of putting yourself out there and uh, trying to get it into a more um, patient. Yeah, I would 
would expand on that um, and sort of some things that my, my wife is, is, is doing. I, I would recommend a blog. If you have questions, if there's something you want to get into, writing a blog, posing those questions, sort of, again, saving who you are and what you want. There might be other people like, hey, I want that too. And then other people like mentors, more expensive experience people who are going to be able to log on, see what you're doing, see that there's something neat, there's some energy building up around it, and, and you get a hold of you. The other thing is you can cold call these people. You just say, hey, I'm excited about what you're doing. I, just, I want to talk to you and find out how you got there. Why are you doing it? What's it like? What's it there? Honestly, uh, on occasion I get emails from artists